Where are you, old pepper? This has got to be tighter. Oh, here, I got it. Huh? Ah, about ready to go, Paul. Jamie, uh, Canyon Road is a little too steep. I'd rather you took the North Fork to Jackson's Ford and then come in the back way. That's got to be at least 10 miles far. It's a longer way, but it's a safe way. You and Haas and Joe take that route all the time. <laughs> yes, we do. So will you when you've had more experience. This is the first time you've taken a wagon this big. I'll be leaving for Beaver Camp in about an hour. I'll see you there. Yes, sir. That was a quick trip. 
thought you was going to be gone for three days. Enterprise. What's that all about? Hey, take a look over there. You all right, Jamie? right away. I expect I can get out to the road and catch a ride on a freight wagon before dark. Yes, I expect you can. Don't want to hang around where I'm not wanted. Not that I blame you. I, I, I did what you told me not to. And I, I got a Good horse killed. And I busted up a wagon. Now, you, you tell me how much that horse and wagon costs, and I swear to you, I'll, I'll send you the money just as soon as I can. Where do you plan to go? A lot of places. Did you figure I was sending you away? Sure, I, I have to write. Wrong. I'm leaving on a pack trip early tomorrow. I want you to come along with me. We'll be gone several days. Pack trip? What about what I did today? We'll get to that. Yes, sir. in range, East Ranch. All right, down this way. Thank you. 
Awfully quiet, Jamie. Cat got your tongue? Uh, just waiting, I guess. Waiting? Want to find out what your punishment's going to be for what you did yesterday? That's about it. What do you think it ought to be? Well, some of the kids at school get a belt used on them when they do something wrong. Mm-hmm. Of course, that's for kids stuff. What I did was work. Expensive, but still an accident. But you did disobey. Yes, sir, I sure did. So what we're concerned with is the punishment for disobedience. Yeah. Well, if we use that strap that you're talking about, we wouldn't be able to sit in the saddle. We've got a long ride ahead of us. Maybe we'll figure something out on the way. Unless you have an idea now. No, I ain't got any. I think you're gonna like that East Ranch spread. That Betsy Rush makes the best pie in the territory. Somebody chopping? Yes, it does. Better have a look. Any of your business, but when I get that done, I'm going to build me a flume. And divert this stream? You got it, mister. Move the creek away from the gravel bar so as I can do my mining in the dry. You're going to pack up and move out? Now, this is my claim. Who are you to be telling me to get out? I'm Ben Cartwright. So what's that mean? It means I own this place. Now, I've got a map that says this is government land. Open to anybody who wants to stake a claim. I'm private property, and you know it.
jump in our claim. We'll have the law on you. You have no claim on anything here. You're in Ponderosa property. Ponder what? Save it, Kale. You're talking to the boss, Rooster. That's Ben Cartwright. What I heard, I thought it'd be as big as a mountain. But he ain't. I'll bet he can be hurt just like anybody else. Now start packing. Keep moving. I'm all the way through. Mr. Cartwright. I run those two off the ranch a week ago. Hell, yeah, we picked up their tracks of the timber. Follow them to Feather Creek. I guess I better ride up that way more often. Oh, I'm forgetting my manners, letting the boss man stand around here. Now, Betsy, good to see you. Mr. Cartwright? Uh, brought a new hand here. I see. Jamie, this is Mr. and Mrs. Rush. Hi, nice to meet you. Hello, Jamie. Glad to know you. Well, I expect you're hungry. Uh, not this time, Clint. We, we're way behind schedule. Still have a long way to go. Oh, uh, here you are. Three months' pay. I think I'd listen to the things you need, and I'll pick it up on the way back. All right, I'll have it ready. All right. Will you excuse me, Mr. Cartwright? Nice to see you again, Betsy. Those, uh... Got to look pretty good. Yeah. With the care and feed they've been getting, there's no reason why they shouldn't. You know, trying to improve the breed is always a gamble. I think this was going to pay off. It's paying off now. There's only two scrubs in the last calf crop. Another two or three generations will tell the story. Yeah. Oh, you'll be seeing Bill Cooper. Say hello for me. Be glad to. Gets lonely here. But his job, that'd have me talking to the squirrels. Now listen, those uh, prospectors came back once. They might try it again. I'll be on the lookout. You two hurry back. Uh, go, Jamie. I'll be seeing you, Jamie. All right, bye bye. See that stone you got your foot on? Has a cross cut in the top of it. It's a section corner. Marks the east line of the Ponderosa. Now this guard tree here behind you, it's a witness tree. Tells you where the cornerstone is just in case it gets covered up. Oh, I see. Uh, this, uh, Bill Cooper, where do we find him? He's at the south camp, about two days' ride from here. You know, Clint Rush wanted us to come in, but his wife didn't. What do you suppose was wrong? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Trouble of some kind. Well, if it had been ranch trouble, I think Clint would have told me. In fact, I'm sure he would have. Family problems are personal. And don't mix into them. Oh, yeah, I know. I... Well, all I was going to say is that this jerky sure don't taste like that apple pie you told me about. <laughs> sure don't. You know, we got a real pretty ride ahead of us. Could be an easy one, too. A rifle. Time to ride.
been a long time. I hope I am welcome here. And I stopped him. That you are welcome. I'm sorry to find you sick. My heart is sorry you came when my granddaughter hunted your beef. Did she miss? No. She shot true and straight. And with a rifle as old as yours, that's no small thing. Oh, White Squirrel is a, the true granddaughter of Tall Polly. Did she choose a good animal? Yes. With good fat on the ribs? Yes, a young steer, a lot of fat. You are the granddaughter of a chief. You did well. She only did what she was told to do. I am the reason. When you get well, you will hunt the mountain lion and the wolves that kill our calves and foals. Well, even if I could hunt, I could not shoot. My gunpowder is gone. I'll send you a rifle and shells and some flour and salt and some blankets. If I see your son, I'll send him back to you. He will only leave again. Yes, it's possible. Well, come on, let's tend to that beef. I don't understand. I, I, I can see why you let that old Indian have the ponderosa be, you know, him and the girl being hungry and all. But, but sending him a rifle and shells, isn't that asking for We just may use the rifle to kill some more ponderosa beef. That's yeah, possible. <laughs> Why are you sending him the rifle? Jimmy had known that old man for a long time. And I'd know he'd kill ponderosa beef only if he needed it to stay alive. And if that happens, then I consider it partial payment and a debt I owe him. What about that old Indian son? Why doesn't he help him? He's become a town Indian. He's quite a taste for whiskey. Stays drunk most of the time. Can't keep a job long enough to earn the money to pay for the whiskey, so he begs. That's plain awful. It's part of a plain awful pattern. We destroyed a proud people. That's the dead I was talking about. We all of us share it. Or ought to.
That cash should have had the Ponderosa brand, not the Fox D. That's right. Hey, somebody's stealing your cash. Well, I don't know if Harlow and Charlie would agree with you. I think you're right. Harlow and Charlie? Yeah, Trap Brothers. They own the box tea. Come on up, young'un. Oh, no trap. I thought this was a south camp. It is. Two saddled horses. Looks like the Trap Brothers are calling on Bill Cooper. We'll come in from the back. I have seen some stubborn people in my life, but he has got to be the worst. Why don't you talk at him? Been too much talk already. you two. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, this ain't like it appears. Uh, old Bill Cooper over there, he's got some funny ideas, and we're just trying to reason with him. Hey, even talking, but not to me. And now, what he's going to try and tell you, Mr. Cartwright, is that we was branding your calves or by goonies. We wouldn't do that. That'd be stealing. Ain't that right, baby brother? That's right. I mean, what we was doing, Mr. Cartwright, you see, is we was branding strays. And everybody knows that ain't stealing. That's Mavericking, and there ain't nothing wrong with that. I saw two of your box tea mavericks following Ponderosa cows. Uh, trying to get acquainted, was he? No. Following the mothers. They were Ponderosa calves. You don't suppose we could have made a mistake? It was 26 by my count, Mr. Cartwright. They must have branded them while I was billing fence. I bet it was one of our hard hands. <laughs> but one hard hand, and he quit you six months before them calves was born. Now, Mr. Cartwright, you don't think for one minute... We'll let the judge do the thinking, Harlow. Now, come on, we've got a long way to go. Let's get started. You got to admit, we didn't harm a hair on old Cooper's head. I mean, we just kind of tied him up in there so he wouldn't get mad and commence to thrashing around and hurt himself while we was talking. Talking about which one was going to pull the trigger and which one was going to dig a grave. All right, move out. <laughs> now, I mean, you know, that that's not true. I mean... That's right, baby brother. That's right. Come to think of it, it was... It was raining uh, mighty hard that day. We couldn't hardly uh, keep the uh, fires going and, and the branding irons hot. I mean, uh, it'd been easy to make a mistake about which calf he was putting the branding iron on. 26 mistakes. You know, uh, Cooper and us have been neighbors for a long time, you know. Uh, y you know, it's the mark of a big man to, to forgive and forget. Appears like uh, somebody left it open. I didn't see area cow. You, you had quite a big herd here, didn't you, Mr. Cartwright?
Move out. You know what? That's what happens. A fella gets worried about a couple little old scrawny calves, and next thing you know, somebody done run off with his whole herd of prime beef. Happen every time like that, you know. it up again, but uh, that rain, I mean, it was a pure D gully washer. And all them little calves was mired down in that mud. Their mamas was nowheres in sight. They was orphans, mavericks. And I said to brother, I said, brother, it's our bounden duty to take care of them poor little calves. You sure you wouldn't like the cold beer, Mr. Cartwright? I mean, it's about the coldest beer in, in the whole territory. Oh. Uh -huh. Don't suppose you would. Why don't you shut up? Now, now, brother, you ain't got no call to talk to me like that. It's like I said, Mr. Cartwright. I mean, it was raining so hard, you, you couldn't hardly see your hand in front of your face. I mean, we weren't really stealing. You were saying? Been here before. They know their way. It's been a busy day. Oh. I got a friend of yours in there, Ben. Clint Rush. Drunk, disorderly, disturbing a peace. Well, Betsy. Mr. Cartwright? I thought I saw you sitting here when we rode in. Uh, you remember Jamie? Yes, you were at the ranch. Uh, Jamie may not look it, but uh, he's hollow to the heels. He's. Uh, He's going to get himself a sandwich and a piece of pie. It was good to see him, and you'll excuse me. Mind if I sit down? No, no, not at all. Feels good just to sit. When's the stage due? Oh, uh, 15 minutes. Maybe an hour. The uh, agent didn't even want to make a guess. Yeah. Nice day to travel. Yes. I I'm going to visit my folks. On Carson City? Mm-hmm. My, uh, my, my father's getting on in years, and, well, I, I thought it would be a good idea to see him before it got too late. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know your father. He's about my age. Mr. Cartwright, I didn't mean that. I... What, that we were tottering to the grave? I know that. M my mother hasn't been feeling very well, and... Oh. Mr. Cartwright, I might as well tell you. I'm leaving Clint. Well, these things happen. I know you've seen him, so if he told you to come talk to me, to ask me to come back, it's not going to do any good. No, not a word. Didn't say a thing. Be a nice change for you in Carson City. Certainly will. And it does get lonely living out in the ranch, miles from your nearest neighbor. Hard to get used to. I'm used to it. I was born on a ranch. Oh, we had our squabbles, I guess most married folk do. All the way into town, I was trying to figure out if it was my fault or his fault. Both our faults. It does take two to argue. I left him a note. I was hoping he'd come get me, but... 
Well, he came to town, all right. He went straight to the saloon. He wasn't looking for me at all. Went to the saloon, he got drunk, he got in a fight, and he got hauled off to jail. And that made up your mind for you? It certainly did. Go on, I'm not about to try to change it. <laughs> there are two men in jail with Clint. You know, those two fellows who open up the gates and scatter the East Branch herd. Were those the two he was fighting? That's what the sheriff said. Well, they ought to be in jail. Well, how is it, Jamie? Well, just fair. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, Mrs. Rush makes the best pie in the territory. Gonna miss that apple pie when I visit East Ranch next. Guess Clint will, too. You know, there's nothing like freshly baked apple pie cooling on a windowsill that says, Welcome home. Well, I guess I just better get going. Betsy, have a nice trip. Thank you. Let's go, Jamie. Get your horse, Mr. Rush. Okay, thanks, Jane. take my place. I've been at East Ranch too long. If that's what you want. Well, it ain't always what you want, Mr. Cartwright. Sometimes... Uh... <sighs> Thanks, Jamie. Yes, sir. I better get on out there. <laughs> Ninety days in jail for the prospectors, six months for the trap brothers. What'll happen to their ranch? Bill Cooper will look after it. Oh. Their cattle will graze with the Ponderosa herd. What about Clint Rush? He said he'd be back at the ranch. Yeah, but he said he'd be on the lookout for those miners, too. That's right, he did. Boy, he sure messed up, didn't he? You know, I bet he rode for the hills. It'll probably take us two or three days to round a better. You were saying? I talk too much. got everything back the way it was. I figured you'd want to ride out and take a look. They look pretty good. Well, we got a few scratched up and one in the barn with a sore leg. Outside of that, everything's all right. Well, you got everything under control. Yeah, and it's going to stay that way till a new man shows up to take over. Why, still want to leave? Well, it's like I told you. It ain't always what you want. It's...
Here, let me take that bag. Sure, it's good to be home. Oh, you don't know how good it is to have you back. Betsy, it's going to be hard to say no to that, but we still have a long way to go. Next time around, I promise. Goodbye. Bye-bye. 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 This is one of my favorite spots. I'd like to stop here for one last look before starting for home. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, it really is. Let's tie up. Even smells pretty. Yeah, yeah, it does. I guess we got some talking to do, huh? Talking? About a horse I killed and a wagon I wrecked. And what kind of punishment I'm gonna get. I thought we decided that you were too old to have your pants worn with a belt. Yeah. When you do something bad, something wrong, and you gotta pay. I agree with that, Jimmy. You break the law, you answer to the courts. Yeah, well, I like the Trab Brothers or, and the Miners. What do you do uh, when an animal gets sick or gets hurt? You take care of them, or call a vet. Well, men get sick. Like, like top pony. Or they just go playing out the road. You, you take care of them. You, you don't yell at them or, or swear at them or fire them. Sometimes I yell and sometimes I fire them. Clint all but broke his back to make things right again. But how did you know he would? Vince a good man, an awfully good man. When a good man makes a mistake, he does everything he can to make it right again. Jamie? Have you had a good look at this witness tree? No, not really. I want you to. Cousin Joe's name. That's right. They made the swing with you, too? Yes, they have. On various occasions. I'll bet they have. Why don't you put your name there?
came up on him around the corner there, Ed Conway was pistol whipping Mr. Miller. That is a lie! Hey, he wasn't there. He swore to me he wasn't there. Mrs. Conway, sit down. I won't sit down. I got as much right to talk as he has. He's trying to lie my husband into prison. I don't have to sit here and let him do that. Mrs. Conway, for the last time, sit down or I'll have you ejected from this court. All right, I'll sit down. You won't listen to Eddie or to me, but you listen to Cartwright telling his lies. Go on, Cartwright, tell your lies. I'll sit down. You may proceed, Mr. Cartwright. Well, there's not really much else to tell you, Honor. Like I say, Ed Conway was whipping on Mr. Miller pretty good with his pistol when I caught him there, and, well, he beat him to the ground. That's it. Did Conway attack you? Well, sort of. We, we scuffled for a minute or two, and I finally got the gun away from him, and about that time, a bunch of other folks came up. Thank you, sir. Your witness, Mr. Becker. Your Honor, the defendant wishes to change his plea to guilty and asks the mercy of the court. Court accepts the plea. Defendant will rise. The court sentences you to five years in the state penitentiary. No! You can't do that! This court is adjourned. Kitty! Some mother she is to give away her own child. Sing wouldn't let you in his kitchen looking like that. Get that face cleaned up. There we go now. Clean as a whistle, huh? But it's not Mr. Cartwright. I'm Hoss and you're Petey. Mr. Cartwright's my pa. You got that? That's it, Hoss and Petey. Oh, I'm saying. This here is Petey. 
Petey, this is Hop Singh. He does the cooking around here, and dang near everything else is very important. Can you say Hop Singh? Hop Singh. There you go. Petey, good name. You big, strong boy. Petey's a wrangler. He's going to go to work for us tomorrow, breaking horses. Petey, uh, maybe a little bit small? Well, we'll just use small horses. Right now, old Petey's a mite hungry. You reckon you can round up some vittles for him? Right away. Big meal for little wrangler. Petey, Hop Singh will get you something to eat. You enjoy it, son. I'll be in the next room. Now, first thing, glass of milk. Tasty. It's good. Now, piece of bread with for sugar. Huh? Now, where is your mama, papa? Papa was bad. He went to jail. Oh, so sorry. Don't worry. He come back soon. Five years. You got Mama. She take care of you. Mama don't want me. What do you say? She don't want me. She gave me the horse. Oh. Women funny people. They say this, they say that. Don't mean nothing. All the time they change their mind. <laughs> you eat the bread. You see, she come for you. Now, we have a bacon and scrambled egg. Beats anything I've ever seen or heard tell of. Woman just give away or something like that. Just push him off. Just hand him over to somebody else. What kind of woman is that, anyway? Well, he said she was drinking. Yeah, not just a little bit, neither. Well, that might explain it, but it sure doesn't excuse it. Not for me, it don't. Oh, well, she'll probably think it over and feel very sorry about the whole thing and come by and pick him up tomorrow. I hope you're right, but I'm afraid not. Well, she's his mother. She's a terrible woman. Give away her own son and him right there hearing every word of it. I'll tell you this, as long as he's around here, I'm going to take care of him like he ought to be taken care of. Tomorrow, you feel fine. You're going to break the horses like 60. <laughs> Petey, he said, tummy full. That right, Petey? You full up? I'm full. Hey, that's good. <laughs> Sleepy, too. Time for new hired hand to get some shut eye. Absolutely. Come along, Petey. Let's go out and go to bed. We got a bed up there that's just made fit to you, huh? And then tomorrow, we'll give you a bath. This thing's a little big, but it's roomy and Ought to be comfortable. It sure ain't gonna be binding no place. There you go. In the bed, cover up your head. You know, Petey, this room needed somebody in it. When a room ain't used, it'll get rusty. Do you know that? I never knew that. See? You learn something every day. Hey, looks better in that shirt than you did. Hey. Hey, where'd you get that? And it wasn't family stay with us. They left it behind. I thought you might find some useful. Oh, uh, yeah, thank you, Joe. Hey, look what little Joe brought us. His name is Oscar. Now, Oscar's been down the road a few miles, but he's still got a few left in him. Would you like to sleep with him? All right. Good. There you go. Hug him tight. Make a fine-looking pair. You two get some sleep, because we got a lot of work tomorrow. We got horses to ride. Night. You little bag, Yeah, sure is. Morning, Jamie. Oh, morning, huh? So, this is our new Wrangler, huh? This is him, Petey Conway. Meet Jamie. Petey, nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, I got a little ride to make this morning, Jamie. Reckon Petey could help you with the chores? <laughs> you bet your life. With all this work I gotta do, I need all the help I can get. <laughs> Petey, that there's Harold. He's getting weaned. Would you like to help Jamie, Petey? Just fine. <laughs> Okay, see you later. Okay, bye bye. Yeah, Petey, where'd you get that just fine stuff? Papa always said it. Oh. Petey, would you like to pet Harold? He's real nice. Just go on right over there. He won't bite you. See, so, you know, what we gotta do, Petey, is uh, we gotta break Harold there from uh, feeding from his mom and uh, 
teach them how to eat out of this bucket. How do you do that? Well, you, you stick your hand down in the milk, see, with your fingers sticking up like this. And old Harold here thinks that your fingers are his mother's. And so he'll start sucking on your fingers and sucks up the milk. Then you take your fingers away, and old Harold's on his own. Get the idea? Just fine. That's good. You want to try it? There, that's it. Put your hand in the milk. That's it. Oh, he bit me! <laughs> I'm sorry, I should have told you. Harold doesn't have any teeth. See, when he feeds on your hand, it feels kind of funny, that's all. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. <laughs> and when the little leprechaun awakened, he picked up his fat bag of gold off the floor of his candy house. Conway? No. Go away. Miss Conway. Mm. Oh. I have company. I didn't know I was going to have company. Um, excuse me. I was combing my hair. My comb. My comb. Oh. Oh. Um. Here. Sit down here. And, um, I can give you a drink. <sighs> Ma'am, I think you've had enough. Yes. No. Ah, you're right. You're absolutely right. You're right. Besides, there's not, not enough left. Thank you. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Thank you. Be careful, please. It's very dangerous to your bare feet. I... I, I have to sit down. I, um... been feeling poorly. Dizzy. Did you hear what happened to Ed? I was there. You were there? Oh. There's got to be a bottle around here. Look at this. Petey, I 
Where did he go? Where did he go? Petey! Petey! Mrs. Conway. Petey's at the Ponderosa. Cartwright. Cartwright. You're the one. You're the one you sat there and you lied. I told the truth and you know it. You took Petey, you took my boy. You gave him to me. I... I gave him. So I did. I remember, I remember. I gave him to you. And I told you to take him and I told you to feed him and I... <laughs> fish come around biting and bothering you. Let's man sleep in peace. I've been keeping myself informed since the trial. Of course, I know what happened in the courtroom that day when she forced the child on you. I've been keeping track of you and the boy. I've been keeping track of her. Now I think some decisions should be made about the boy. That's why I asked you to come in. Yes, sir. I've seen Mrs. Conway twice on the street once in her home. At my request, Reverend Smith, Sheriff Coffey also went to visit her. I'm sorry to say we all reached the same conclusion. She's not a fit mother. Well, I'm sorry to say that I agree with that decision, Judge. Which brings us to the question of what can be done for the boy. How do you feel about him? What do you mean? He's been with you for some time. You've gotten to know each other. You fond of him? Fond of him? Oh, I don't think that says it quite right. He's a mighty fine young fella. I, he means a great deal to me, Judge. I thought so. Ben and Joe, how do they feel? Oh, they feel the same way I do. Good. Well, I think that answers the question. What? That you adopt the boy, if you want. 
adopt him? Can I do that? Well, if the boy's mother will sign a paper giving you custody, she's indicated she would. Judge, these are people we're talking about. Lives and, and years. I'd like to have a little time to think that over. I'm glad you feel that way. Take all the time you need. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'll, I'll let you know what I've decided, Judge. Mr. Hoss, are you up early? Yeah. I fix you breakfast. Six egg, fried potato, hot cake. No, no. No, thanks, Hopsy. Not this morning. the paper for me to sign? I brought it. Well, give it to me. Please sign it and get it done with and over with. There. Sign it. What are you waiting for? She's yours now. Go on, get out of here. I said get out of here! Come here. Come here! Take a look at yourself. I said look at yourself! I want you to see what everybody else sees. Let me go! We gotta get some food in you. Put some 
water on here to eat. As soon as it's hot, I want you to clean yourself up. You hear? Meantime, I'm gonna get you something to eat. before I stuff it down you. Where do you keep your clothes? Right there. Is that it? Mm hmm. That's my best dress. Katie, I'd like to have a dress for this lady. Oh, fine. I'll get her measurements. Uh, Katie, I, I need one now. I mean, right now. But, Hoss, I have to make it. Well, what about this one here? Well, will this fit her? Yes, just about. But that's Sarah Butler's dress. Never mind, Sarah. I'll, I'll talk to her and make it all right. But, Hoss, I can't let you. Come on, Katie. Oh. All right. And, uh,. Katie, can you, can you do something about that? I mean, fix her up a little bit? I can try. Well, fix her up best you can. I'll be back in about half an hour, huh? This way, please. Hi, Katie. How's it going? Here. Oh, good, huh? Oh, you've overpaid me. Well, it's worth it. She looks a whole lot better than she did when I brought her in here. I went by the ladies shop and had them fill this bag with stuff you'll need to go with that dress. We'll get you some shoes on the way out. Come on. Thanks again, Eddie. <laughs> Enough's enough. Eat that sandwich. Eat it, or I'm gonna feed it to you. You're running me out of town, aren't you? That's right. I don't know who you think you ought to do this to me. Well, let's just say that I'm probably about the only man around that'll go to the trouble. The way I found you, nobody would touch you with a ten-foot pole. I had friends. Oh? I wouldn't call them that. There's another one. Eat it. Eat it. Why are you doing this to me? To get rid of you. You don't have to. I signed those papers. You're gonna dump, Petey. There's still you. I don't want you around dying off inch by inch by inch. I want to get rid of you lock, stock, and barrel. <laughs> Well, I might argue that point, but we're not here for your health. Come on. Hoss, I expected you earlier. Well, we, uh, we had a little bit of a delay, Doc. Doc? This is Jill. Jill, this is Dr. Hubert. You didn't tell me she was pretty. Well, I reckon that's a matter of opinion. Uh, come in, LaPaul. That's a good face. Good bones. A lot of strength in it. I like it. Uh, 
What are you so angry about? About this. You two. What's going on here? Well, didn't Huss tell you? Well, I, I wasn't for sure I was going to go ahead and bring her, Doc, until the very last minute. You see, along with all the other things, she's got an awful mean temper. Temper? Good. Good. I have a temper myself, and I never apologize for it. Won't you sit down? The woman who kept house for me and helped me with my patients has just gotten married. And I've been looking for somebody to take her place. Huss came to me yesterday and asked me if I'd consider you. Frankly, I was doubtful. But now that I've met you, I'm delighted. What about you? I... I don't know. I had no idea about this, really. I, I don't know. You should like it here. It's interesting work, rewarding. I'll even pay wages. My husband's in prison. Mr. Cartwright tell you that? He told me all about you. None of it troubles me. All I want to hear from you now is yes or no. First, I want to talk to Mr. Cartwright alone. I'll be waiting in my office. What's troubling you now? I would like a little truth. What are you up to? What do you mean, up to? Everything's in the open. Is it? Of course it is. You told me you were running me out of town. Now you bring me here. There's nothing wrong with that. The doc's as fine a man as there is in the county, and anybody will vouch for that. And like he said, the work's interesting, and it's rewarding. He'll even pay you wages. There's got to be a catch here someplace. There's no catch. It's a chance for you, and a good chance. You do with it what you want. You get drunk, the doc will kick you out. That'll be the finish. You stay clean, and you can make a new life for yourself. Why? Why are you doing this? Because I want to be able to tell Petey that I gave his mother every chance. And that it was her own fault that she finally ended up dead in the gutter. Get out of here. Get out of here! Big Wrangler, how are you, bud? Just fine. <laughs> what? <laughs> Petey wouldn't go to bed until you got here, so I uh, just read him a little story and he fell sound asleep. Along with you. Oh, I was just resting my eyes. <laughs> yeah. How was your day? Oh, about the way I expected, I reckon. Now, come on, Petey, it's time to go to bed. Tell Paul good night. Good night, Mr. Cartwright. Ah! What a big boy.
was here. I took the brandy in the kitchen to have a nightcap, and I forgot to put it back. You can have it if you feel you must. I've got another idea. Did you ever play cribbage? No. No, I, I never did. I couldn't sleep either. A feeling of frustration, of hopelessness, helplessness. Losing a patient like Mrs. Johnson, watching her go these past weeks. I kept thinking, there must be something the medical profession can do to save these people. Come, sit down. I'll explain it to you as we go along. First, I deal six cards. Now I lay away two, first down. Uh, let's see your hand now. Eight. Fifteen, two. And six is 21. That's three for me. And five is 26, four for me. You know you're going to beat me at this game. <laughs> Mrs. Conway, you've won yourself a battle. And I think it's the last one you'll ever need to fight. Thank you. Come on, off to bed. This is your day off. Doggone it. Hey, gotta shoot some. That burn it, it ain't fair. It is fair. Yeah, but look how you're beating me. I guess I'm better than you are. Well, I reckon you aren't that, little buddy. I think you've been practicing on me. Hey, I think I hear Hop Singh calling. Run in there and see if he's got something good for his feet. I ran into Judge Sims today. He wants to see you. Oh, yeah? Hearing us about Petey. Yeah? The more than a month since you got Mrs. Conway's consent, the judge figures you ought to go in and get the formal adoption proceedings started. Yeah. Mrs. Conway's working in the garden. Today's our day off. Oh, uh, I'll call her. Oh, no, never mind. I'll talk to her out there. Uh, not until I tell you what happened. Sit down, please. She's done very well. Better than I expected. Well, that's good news. It's sort of dangerous leaving that stuff out there where she can get to it, ain't it? I put it there deliberately. She hasn't touched a drop since she's been here. She's worked hard. She's painfully clean. Well, uh, I reckon she knows you wouldn't put up with anything else. Well, probably, but uh, I never had to mention it. Yeah. That mean temper she's got. She couldn't be too good around sick people. She's very good with sick people. They ask for her. Are you sure we're talking about the same woman? Same woman. Different environment. There's been changes, but that's why you brought her here, wasn't it? Yeah. I want you to see for yourself. Go out and talk to her. Yeah. I ring her better. Let a person know you're coming.
bringing work in the dirt without getting a little bit of it on you. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, no. Still got that bad temper, ain't you? Why are you here? Well, oh, I thought I'd drop by and see you and talk to you. Doc tells me you're doing right well at behaving yourself. <laughs> I bet that disappoints you. No. No. You got as much right to do well as anybody else, I reckon. I'm going into town in the court tomorrow to adopt Peter. I thought you did that a long time ago. Yeah. I tried to, uh, I couldn't get it scheduled in court until tomorrow. You're afraid I'm gonna try and stop you, aren't you? That's why you're here. Well, things have changed a little. I wondered what your plans were. My plans are, I'm gonna stay with Dr. Hubert a while longer. Then I'm going east. I got people in Kansas. Neither you nor the boy will ever see me again. Well. Say one thing for you, and you make a bargain, you stick to it. Yep. Especially when you got no choice. You take Petey. Good luck. I, I hadn't thought about that much either. I found something to do today. I found eggs, perhaps sink, in the barn. A chicken tried to bite me. Well, Dad, burn that chicken anyhow. We'll go out there tomorrow and give that, that old chicken a talking to, won't we? You, uh, you get some sleep now. Good night there, Wrangler. Here you go, Petey. Where are we going to? It's a surprise. You like surprises, don't you? Just fine. Oh, come here. Forget this. What's that? It's closed. Oh, yeah, I think it is. Thanks, boss. See you. Have a nice ride, Petey. Sure. See you, Paul. <laughs> changes that have been made. You made them, not me. Hey, Pete. 
You're going to be living with your mama now. You don't like that? Just fine. Well, Doc, you, you got your family all of a sudden. It took you long enough, Hoss. Yeah. Well, sometimes uh, good things take a spell, don't they? You going to come back and see us? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I get over this direction pretty frequently. I'll be seeing you. Maybe somebody's in trouble. Take it easy. Just take it easy now. Is he dead? I don't know, but he can't be very far from it. We'll have to do whatever we can. Oh, please. Please, oh, One last turn, then tire off. Yes, sir. Shoot. I'll shoot you again. Don't you fret about it, none. Please don't shoot. Everything's gonna be all right. Don't. Got a tight offer in? Stop, Mr. Griswold. Sure out of his head, ain't he? He sure is. You skedaddle on back. Tell Mr. Griswold I'm bringing him in.
has been shot. Bushwhack, looks like. Miss Griswold! Miss Griswold! What is it? Mr. Griswold says to tell you he's bringing in a feller who's been shot. How bad? Oh, real bad. He's out of his head. We know him? No, some stranger. Where was he hit? Here in the leg and up here in the back. He's too bad hurt to ride. We got him on a travi. You want me to fetch the doc? We're not going to pay a doctor till I know we need him. You go on back and give Mr. Griswold a hand. Yes, ma'am. You men, fetch me some water from the well. Leave that be, Julia. I thought you wanted the sourdough ready for the drive. It will be. Your pa's bringing in the man who's been shot. Who is he? I don't know. We'll put him in your room. My room? Last I heard, we don't have a hotel here. You can bed down the sitting room. Oh, uh, get those bandages we rolled out of the whole chest. Suppose he dies. In my bed, Ma. Oh, for heaven's sake, don't turn queasy on me. with fever. Julia, get me some water from the bunkhouse pump. It's colder. Should have some kind of identification. An awful lot of money. Joseph Cartwright. On behalf of Benjamin Cartwright. Dated June 12, 1869. Virginia City. He's gonna need the doctor. Send one of the men to the lodge pine. I'll have him tell Sheriff Truslow too. Here, tuck this away someplace safe. Oh, Don't say nothing about it. You better wire his kin in Virginia City. Yeah. Back kind of early, ain't you? Where's the supply wagon? I left in Virginia City with Bates. Thought I'd better get here as soon as possible. Well, it's a matter of trouble sometimes. I don't know, Mr. Cartwright. Mm -hmm. Telegraph agent stopped me and said he had a wire from the ranch down in Lone Pine. That's right near where Joe is. Yes, sir. He said I ought to get that to you as fast as I could. Horse! Settle the horses. Two days' supplies and fill here. Yes, sir. Griswold said you'd probably be along. I'm going to show you a shortcut. How's my son? Well, the doc was working on him when I left, but I've been out here better than two hours. Let's right? ride. Yeah. Right Cartwright's, his dad and his brother. How's his condition, Doctor? It's serious, Mr. Cartwright. I, uh, 
I removed a bullet from his leg. There's another one in his back that's causing the infection. I'm, I'm afraid if I probe too near the chest cavity in his present condition, it might kill him. We'll just have to wait and see. He, uh, he had this on him. This is just the way we found it. We figured that's probably why he got shot. Does the sheriff know about this? He's the only one I told. I wonder why anybody would want to kill him. You'd, uh, you'd better leave me alone with him now. Where we found your son, Mr. Cartwright. It's government land, open grazing. Uh, whose ranches are these? Oh, mine, Ed Flanders, Bill Steen's, a couple of others. Are all those fellers outside right now? Not all of them, but they will be by dark. We're moving out on a community cattle drive in the morning. We're headquartering here. Now, you question the men outside. No, I didn't see any need. Why not? Well, they'd have come talk to me if they'd seen anything out of the ordinary. Did you look? No. Tom told me there wasn't much to see. 
Looks to me like nothing much of anything's been done. That's not entirely true. I've been looking for reasons for the shooting. You have any luck? First, let me ask you, did he have any enemies? No. Are you sure? Positive. None. Well, then he could have had some trouble with that business deal. No, it was a straightforward deal. He sold some horses to the army, got paid in cash, and was on his way home. And the way I see it, could have been an accident, somebody out hunting. Accidentally shot twice. Well, he could have been shot by mistake. Somebody out gunning for somebody else. Who? Well, I don't know. There hadn't been any feuding going on around here. No bad arguments, Tom. We all get along just fine around here. Well, where are we? Just about the same. Judy, you go sit with him. Dr. Scully might need you. Ma, I haven't used the dishes yet. Oh, well, your ears must have gotten in the way of your hands. Get along. What it boils down to, Chef, is that all this time has gone by and you haven't done anything. Oh, now, hold on. I figured that you were coming, so I waited to talk with you. Well, you've talked to us. Well, now I'll wait till your son comes around and I'll talk to him. Sheriff, that may not be for some time. And meanwhile, whoever it was that shot him isn't going to be riding in here with a sign across his chest saying, I shot Joe Cartwright. So what are you going to do? Well, I'm not going to be badgered by you, that's for sure. Well, so I'm going to have a word with Dr. Scudder, then I'll talk to the men outside. Uh, Mr. Griswold, would you have time to show Hoss where you found Joe? Well, we were going to move out to the drive camp before dark, but... Oh, I'll see the supplies are loaded. You'll have time. Thank you. No, uh, no great change. His fever's up a bit, but that was predictable. I'm just checking to see if I have what I might need. Nothing will be done without your knowledge and consent. You expect the fever to go any higher? I do. But how soon and how much, I can't say. The bullet... Maybe the sole cause of the infection, but bits of cloth or dirt or both may have been driven into the wound, adding to the problem. You're wondering about my competence. In your position, if it were my son with a bullet in his back, I'd wonder too. I wish I could call in another doctor for consultation, but there's not one available. Will this do? Yes, yes, that'll do nicely. Now, I'd like you to fill that with water, put it on the stove, and let it boil for at least 30 minutes. Then empty it out and bring it back to me. Empty it out? Yes. Uh, be sure not to touch the inside of the basin. Very well. Thank you. I have the usual diplomas on my office wall, but a diploma will only tell you what school a man's attended. Are you a surgeon? I am. I was a surgeon with the Union Army. I served at Gettysburg in the field hospital. Once, Mr. Cartwright, I operated 48 hours without stopping. All gunshot wounds, just about every kind you could imagine. You're very well qualified, Doctor. Thank you for telling me. Excuse me.
Well, it could have been a horse much like this one, but he was riding a good way off. Well, was there anybody else around? None that I could see, no. But there are a few drawers where someone else could have been. Did you hear any shots? None. But I was over in Wet Meadow when I saw this rider. That's a good six, seven miles from where your son was found. Well, what do you think of that? They'll do. But we'll need about ten more head. Well, you have by mid-afternoon tomorrow, Jim. Right now. All right, come give me a hand with the supply wagon tally. Sure. Ed, Orv, can you hold up a minute? This is Ben Cartwright. Man whose son was shot. Ed Flanders, Orv Pettis. Hi. Sorry about your boy, Mr. Cartwright. Thanks. Look for some information. Might be of some help. If I'd have had any, you'd have had it by now. Why? Well, something you might have seen or heard. Some little thing, maybe. The big thing, Mr. Cartwright, is I haven't seen any strangers around. I haven't either, Mr. Cartwright. Well, doesn't have to be a stranger. It could be anybody. The people around here are all good, solid men. No need for you to question any of us. Well, somebody bushwhacked my boy. And I hope you find out who did it. But a man who's got his son's maybe dying, he can go off half-cocked. You just see your gun ain't pointing in the wrong direction. I guess maybe you had a good reason for being so hard-nosed, Mr. Cartwright. Ed Flanders had a son, 19. Gunned down by a man whose brother had been robbed and killed. Ed's son wasn't guilty. These tracks here is me and Aaron coming up, and this is where we found your brother laying. Yeah. Sure fired lots of ammunition. Just wonder somebody didn't hear it. Not too many passed this way. You did. Well, we was just out looking for strays for the drive, but we might not have come this way for six or eight months. Yeah. Mr. Griswold, you see it's just you and another fella? That's right. The news tracks are these. That's right. Julia, ask Mr. Cartwright to come in, please, and get some more cold water. Is he gonna die? Julia, please go.
fever is dangerously high. The bullet will have to come out. You said probing for the bullet could be dangerous. If the bullet is too deep into the chest cavity, it could be fatal. Well, isn't there some way of getting the fever down without removing the bullet? He's young and strong. It's possible his body might be able to overcome it. But you don't think so? I believe the odds are gravely against it. The bullet you took out of his leg, how deeply did that penetrate? Well, not, not too deep, but it came to rest against a bone. May I see it? The tip isn't flattened. Well, that could mean that Joe was shot from long range. Maybe the bullets were almost spent when they hit him. Well, if, if that's true, then it might mean the bullet in his back didn't go too deeply. But there's no way of knowing until you start a probe. No. You know the risks involved. If you want me to operate, I'll have to have your permission. This, this bullet didn't penetrate too deeply. Maybe we'll be lucky again. Sure you got a stranger here, got bushwhacked? Sure is. How bad hurt is he? Pretty bad. Doc's still with him. That's his paw over there.
How's little Joe? Well, the doctor's operating on him now. We just have to wait. You find out anything? Well, we saw some new tracks, with like a couple of horses. Looks to me like somebody's been nosing around out here after Griswold and brought Joe in. We tried to backtrack it, but lost it. You know what I think? You know, if, if you bushwhacked somebody, you might just want to come back and look around just to be sure. But not if you're a stranger. A stranger wouldn't hang around. I sure would hate to think it might be a neighbor of mine. Sheriff. Sheriff, do you have a hunting pack? You want to use dogs, huh? Yeah, we could put them on that back trail. Huey Woodson's got a pack. I don't know. A cold trail like that might be a waste of time. Looks to me like enough time has been wasted already around here. You know, a little effort on your part wouldn't hurt nothing. It's sure worth a try, Sheriff. Mr. Cartwright, Dr. Scully wants to see you. Yes, Doctor. You were right, Mr. Cartwright. It wasn't very deep. And now? Now it's up to your son. Could I see him? All right, just for a minute. Thank you. Mr. Cartwright, I have to be leaving for a while. Oh? Well, it's a matter of saving a mother and a child. Oh, yes, well, uh, when do you think you'll be back? Well, I'll be back as soon as possible. I've given Mrs. Griswold all the instructions necessary. Seems kind of foolish now. I'm telling you, you're not going to accomplish nothing. Somebody bushwhacked my boy. I'm going to find out who and why. Me and Mr. Cartwright, we're riding out to where we picked up the son. Now, Bob, I want you to go to Huey's, pick up them dogs, and you meet them there. All right, if you all say so. Come on. Stubborn men, the Cartwrights. Plain foolish, I calls it. Well, I side with Ed here. 
They ain't gonna do no good with them dogs. Well, there's something to be admired in the way they protect their kin. Well, that's their business. We got our own work to do. Let's get to the drive camp. Corps out in the South Fork picking up strays. I'll go down and join him and meet you there. All right, you men. Let's move on. Found your son, Mr. Cartwright. Sheriff ought to be along any time now. Thank you very much. Well, I better get to the drive camp. Oh, this pouch belongs to the sheriff. I wonder if you'd mind giving it to him for me. Mr. Griswold? It's your brand, right? Yeah. T for Tom, P for Pat. <laughs> My wife and I, we got it registered when we got married. The, the teepee. Yeah. Teepee. That's what Joe keeps saying over and over again. Teepee. Teepee and wagon wheel. Wagon wheel. You a ranch around here with a wagon wheel brand? Yeah. Or Pettis and Jim Fenton. They got the wagon wheel brand. They moved out. All of them? All of them but the big cart, right? He's still there. Be dark soon. Don't give us much time. It's your teepee brand. Yeah? Yeah. Some care and a good hot running iron. You make a wagon wheel out of your teepee brand. Your son caught him in it. He told us about the brands, didn't he? I'm heading back to your ranch. I'll wait for the sheriff. All right. We'll follow you in. All right. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Stay here till I get over by the house.
Set to Drew! It's going to be a rough ride, but we'll make it as comfortable as possible. I'll just be glad to get home. We'll uh, get that rig back to you as soon as we can. No hurry, Mr. Cartwright. Me and Julie aren't going anywhere until Tom gets back from the drive. Yeah. You ready, Paul? Yeah, all set. I'd like to thank you for the ski guy you made me, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah, well, it's the least I could do after that good nursing you gave me. Well, uh, really don't know how to say thank you enough. Orv and Fenton could have bled us dry if your son hadn't caught him switching our brands. So let's just say one hand washes the other. Yeah, fair enough. Ladies, we'll see you. Good day, ladies. Now then, it has been moved and seconded that the Virginia City Merchants Association sponsor a baby contest. Huh? <laughs> I say, let's have a turkey shoot. No good. We'd have to hold it outside of town. Wouldn't help business at all. Mm. And it adds a rowdy element. Mm -hmm. Now, I say we should have an oratory contest. It's got class. It's got mm. tone. Well, we did and that in 66. Put the whole town to sleep. How about a pie-eating contest? Now... Fierce overhead, all them pies. Now, I don't see the slightest objection to us having a baby contest. Hmm? Uh, according to Lon here, the one they had over in Grover's Creek, just did absolute wonders for business. Oh, there was some kind of problem they had, but I don't recall it. Well, we'd have to explore all the possibilities, Bert. Oh, we, we, we could have a horse race. Outside of town. Wouldn't help business. Rowdy element. Call the question. Come on, I got customers waiting. Now then, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion is carried. Now, the first thing we got to do is to get some judges. Well, we could probably get Jim Pender. Nine kids of us all. That ought to make him some kind of an expert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rufus, I am appointing you to the committee for lining up the judges. I got to get back to the shop. Yeah, good, good, good. Try and get an extra one, will you? Now, bachelors are preferred. Oh. I can probably get Charlie Spears. Oh, that'd be fine. That'd be fine. That'd be just fine. Well, now I'm ready to entertain a motion for adjournment. We, uh, uh... Yeah. Meeting is adjourned. Hey, Haas. Haas, hold up a minute. Oh, how, how are you? Haas. I was hoping to meet up with you. We just, yeah? we just had a meeting in there. Yeah, fine. We're going to have a baby contest. Oh, that's good. How'd you like to be a judge? Me? Oh, I sort out of my land. Oh, oh, there's nothing to it. Yeah? You come into town a week from Saturday, stroll along and look at the babies, vote for whichever one suits your fancy, acknowledge the applause and so forth, and it's a real service to the community. Well, well, I'll see you later, Lon. Oh, Bert, hmm? I just remembered what that problem was over in Grover's Creek. The judges had an awful time. Really? Awful, like, there was all kinds of pressure, bribery, threats. Oh, feelings were running pretty high, huh? Oh, one judge was took down with a nervous affliction, and I believe there was some talk of actual bloodshed. Well, that's just what we want, Lon. We want to get folks' interest. 
You know, it seems to me that we might have ourselves a real Jim Dandy of a fundraiser, eh? guess what happened to me today. Not in a million years. You're going to judge a baby contest. How'd you know that? Hop Singh told us. <laughs> How'd he know it? They, they just voted on it, and I rode straight here without telling us old. How'd he know that? He read it in the cookie. How'd you know that? A word travel fast. Come, come. <laughs> Mr. Horse Carlite, I'd like you to meet my cousin, Hop Singh. How are you, ma'am? Happy to meet. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, see, first a cousin, Lim Toy. Uh, this, Ah Ping. Uh, oh, second cousin. How do you do? Oh, I'm fine. Happy to meet them. Uh, Mr. Ross, you take close a look. Put out finger. Let him play with it. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps the most beautiful baby in all Virginia City. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm saying, I think you're trying to influence me. Oh. Uh, just help make up mine. Face fat, our ping, most uh, beautiful. That's shameful. No offense to you, ma'am. I'm happy to meet you and see your lovely baby, but Hop Singh, I will not be influenced. I'll make up my mind the day of the contest. Until then, I'll remain completely impartial. Cha 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 cha. Don't worry, I fix. I show him. I show. Can you imagine that? He tried to sway me. Well, I'm afraid you're going to come across a lot of that. Uh, I don't know why. That was the same reason Hop Singh tried to get to you. Ah, oh, this whole thing's just for fun. It's just a jolly occasion. I can't really see anybody getting serious about the whole thing. <laughs> Thank you. How long do you reckon it'll be? 
Well, I'm pretty swamped with baby dresses right now. Uh, yeah. Day after tomorrow? That'll be fine. Well, good morning, Mrs. Porter. Hello, Elaine. Hoss Cartwright. Howdy, Miss Porter. Oh, Hoss, now my friends call me Sissy. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, handsome as ever, isn't he, Elaine? <laughs> yes, indeed. I understand you're going to judge the contest. Well, that that's true. Me and Jim Pender and Charlie Spears. Oh, of course. But I don't doubt that you'll be the backbone, the mainstay of the judging. I'd like your opinion as to... Uh, Miss Porter, i got to tell you what I've told the other ladies. I can't look at that baby. I can't even discuss that contest. i got to keep myself plumb impartial. Admirable. Totally admirable. Yeah. Hello, Jamie. Oh, hello, man. I hear the pants. Yeah. Come on, Jamie. Let's go. Oh. Day, ladies. Good day. Bye. Bye. Would you excuse me a moment? Mm hmm Tiresome man. Hey. He wouldn't even look at Michael. He insisted I put Jennifer in the other room while he was here. You're entering the child? I suppose, yes. I never was too clear on the relationship. I'm her guardian. I want uh, a dress for Michael. Your prettiest pattern out of that material. With a little white collar. And edge it with this lace. Down the front and on the wrist. What are the other women having made? Nothing quite like this. Edith Medcalf and Roseanne Tate? No, not this elaborate. Good. A pretty frame helps a pretty picture. I want Michael to have the finest clothes in the contest. I think he will. <laughs> that includes Jennifer. I don't expect my dressmaker's child to show up in something finer than I'm paying for. Is that clear, Miss Summers? Yes. I intend to win. <laughs> now. Show me some patterns. going to influence my decision, is it? Certainly not. But there is information that you ought to be officially aware of if you're going to do your job properly. I reckon that's all right. This is strictly confidential. Yeah. simple duty. Passing on malicious gossip like that. Then why does Edith Weston always keep her child covered from head to toe? I ain't gonna listen to more of that. You walk all right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can manage it. Jim, uh, here's your hat. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. Oh. You got it all straight now. Out of oak. Oh, yes, yeah, yes, indeed, uh-huh. We don't like doing this, Jim, but, you know, we had to do it on kind of rose in. Uh-huh. All right, listen, you don't have to tell me anything about women. <laughs> no hard feelings. Oh, oh no, 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 listen. Uh, no, no, okay. no. <laughs> Hi. Jamie's trousers are ready. Oh, good. 
That, Bernard, can you fix this for me before the contest, Elaine? Expect? You sound mad as a hornet. Well, I am. Dead burn women anyhow. You're quite right. Huh? Women. Are you sure you'd like to kiss me? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Hey, what's the matter? You're not very interested. I'm sure I am. You don't sound like it. Well, I am. How much? Oh, uh, quite a bit. A whole lot. All right. What's wrong? You didn't say when you'd do it. This afternoon? Promise? Cross my heart. Adorable in it. Hmm. Jennifer looks so much like you. Well, that's natural. My sister's baby. Oh, of course, your sister's child. I hope it's short enough. I want his cute little feet to show. She's dead? Mm hmm. In childbirth. I'm sure I told you about it, Mrs. Porter, when I brought Jennifer back. From Sacramento? Mm hmm. What about the father? Strikes me he should be taking care of his own child. He's a drunkard. She's better off with me. When you make the bonnet, cut it so that it frames his face and doesn't cover it. So everyone can see what a beautiful child he is. All right. What was your sister's married name? Bayfield. Hmm. It's really very nice. I have relatives in Sacramento, you know. Oh. I'll pick the dress up with the bonnet. Hello. I want to send a telegram to Sacramento. Bert, I thought we had this deal all worked out. Uh, yes, but in looking over the contract, there were one or two little points. Well, let's get them cleared up. You know my son, Bert Jr., don't you? Oh, yes. But I don't think you have ever seen my new little granddaughter, Millicent. Well, what's this got to do with the contract? Uh, nothing. And on the other hand, everything. Ben, I don't quite know how to go about this. Well, let me help you. My son, Hoss, is judging a baby contest. Well, then let's get down to cases. Oh, oh. Don't look like there's been no woman type females around. Uh oh, just a minute. I'll go check inside. Yeah, good idea. Good news. Coast is clear. <laughs> yeah, good. Let's get this stuff unloaded. Well, here, I can take care of the supplies, Hoss. No trouble. Yeah? Yeah. If I can do any other chores you'd like me to handle also, I'm swamp out the stable, chop some firewood, anything at all. You, uh, you feeling all right? Yeah, just fine. Yeah? You know, all the way back from town, you didn't open your mouth. Didn't I? No. If you ain't sick, you got something on your mind. What is it? Well, you know that girl in town, Kathy? Yeah. Yeah, well, you see, she's got this brother. Is he giving you trouble? Oh, no, no, that, that's her other brother. I'm talking about her little brother. Oh, how little? 
He's a baby. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah, but and he's, he's real... And he's pretty, and he's beautiful, and he's sweet, and he's nice, and all them things, right? Yeah, as you know. Yeah, because every baby in town is all of a sudden. That's how I come. I don't know what kind of female wild she's pulling on you. Real nice. Well, you just tell her it didn't take, you hear? I ain't gonna be influenced, got to, or taken by nobody under no circumstance. You understand that? Yeah, Scott, I can sit... I don't want to hear no more about it, Jamie. That's it. But, Horace... No, I don't want to hear it. Paul, you can't believe what's going on in town with the folks about that baby contest. Oh, I think I do, oh. Ross. Bert Rubush put the pressure on me to persuade you to vote for his grandchild. Is that a fact? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I wish there was something I could do about it, Paul, but I can't. Well, there's no need. I just told him I didn't do business that way. Yeah, good. It's just hard to believe that human beings can act like that. You'd be surprised. Well, you can't imagine what some of them women are, are telling me about other women's babies. It's just terrible. It's awful. Hoss, maybe it'd be an idea for you to just withdraw. No, that wouldn't be no good. They'd just get somebody else, and he'd probably be, be influenceable. Hey, Tessie's got that brood mare out back. Oh, yeah? How'd she look? Well, I think you ought to take a look at her. Well, I'll do that just before supper. Dad, burn it anyhow. What's the matter, brother? You got trouble? Yeah. Hey, Joe, I ask you, what do folks take me for anyhow? Well, it's hard to say. Why, you'd, you'd think that they figured I had no more backbone than a willow branch in a windstorm. Oh, a baby contest, huh? Yeah, I've been cussed, coaxed, begged, barred, lied, zoo, stole, as if any of that kind of treatment made me make up my mind before the contest. <laughs> Oh, you got too much character for that. Yeah. I'm glad you see that. That's one of the things that's always made me proud to have you as a brother. Integrity. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. It's the backbone of a man, integrity. Yeah. Got a hundred dollar prize in that contest, huh? Yeah. It's a lot of money, huh? Sure is. <clears throat> nice if uh, somebody really needed it, won it. You, uh, got somebody in particular in mind? No. I'm no, just making a statement to be nice if whoever won it was somebody that needed it. <laughs> oh. Good. I guess I'm just getting a little gun shy. That's all, Joe. I'm sorry. Of course, there is the widow, Cumberland. <laughs> I, mean, uh -huh. I knew it. Look, I just said a name. I didn't mean anything. Well, I can think of at least nine deserving people, like, like Elaine Summers, for example. All right, all right, forget it. I didn't mean anything by it. Supper lady. Supper lady, gentlemen. Well, touchy. Good. After that mutton hash last night, I need a decent meal. Yeah, that Tommy Cameron happens to be a cute kid. Oh, will you get off of that? Okay. Well, Maryland's pretty good. Hash. Mutton hash again, Paul. I kind of like Well, I hate it. I know. You like pig steak, hash brown potato, hot apple pie with curry? That's right. Can have when you vote for our ping. Otherwise, mutton hash. Well, I ain't a eating mutton hash. I ain't gonna be influenced at no cost. Well, I better be heading on home. Same here. Supper's probably burned with frazzle. <laughs> You're lucky. All I got to look forward to is hard words and cold mush. I'm gonna have another drink. Same here. Hello, boss. Howdy. What's the matter with all these fellas, anyhow? Oh, a variety of things, but most of them, their home life's all tore up because of this baby contest. Isn't that too bad? Bring me a big T-bone, some potatoes, and a big slab of apple pie, huh? Sure is great for business. Say, Hoss, I hear the baby contest's a boat race. What's that supposed to mean? Well, the word's out you've been fixed. Where'd you hear a thing like that? Well, it's common talk in the Chinese community. Well, it's a lie. Straight goods? You know me better than that. Thanks. Gents, I'll cover all bets on the baby contest. How can you set odds on a thing like that? 
Well, it's like a maiden horse race where you look at the sire and the dam. <laughs> Only in this case, you consider the parents. Oh. Sounds reasonable. <laughs> Not to me, it don't. I've never seen this town so worked up about anything. You think this is bad? You just wait till it's all over. We're gonna have one winner. We're gonna have a whole bunch of weeping women. But it has been very good for business. I hate to tell you how bad it has been for my marriage. The whole town's accusing us of cheating, having our own kids entered in the contest. Yeah, yeah. The sponsors, we just should have had better sense. Oh, well, next time we'll know better. As far as I'm concerned, there ain't gonna be no next time. Wouldn't have helped none. Our women folk would have talked us into it anyway. Kind of reminds me of a story I learned once in school. Oh, remember no story about no baby contest in school? Oh, no, that's about some Greek goddess, a nasty female who put up a golden apple for the most beautiful woman. Well, that caused so much trouble, it started the Punic War and the founding of Rome. No, 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 that, that was the Trojan War and the destruction of Troy. Oh, whatever, but the point is, it was the women done it. Yeah, well, it's the men that's putting the pressure on me at the moment. Yeah, and I bet behind every single one of them, there was some woman. That's right. But them that put up the golden apple is a bunch of greedy men. Well, we gotta keep the economy moving somehow. It's just up to us men to keep the women under control. Why, Lon, as I recall, you're a bachelor. Now, some of these married men might find that a bit more difficult than you. Twenty-five to one for my kid? Mm-hmm. Those are awful long odds. I think they're fair, considering. I think you just insulted my wife. Oh, no, no, no. She's a fine-looking lady. And you insulted me. Yeah, I was just looking for a peaceful place to get a bite to eat. Well, how does a slab of roast, taters, and pie sound to you? What? That sounds mighty fine to me. Well, you just come right on in. We were just getting ready to dig in. Yeah? We'll fix you up. Sissy Porter, what is worth $10.75? And no baby bunting, some ribbon. Will you please come to bed? How can you sleep at a time like this? In the name of mercy, Edith, what do you want me to do? Oh, you nearly fried me to death, huh? Well, serves you right, sneaking around here in the kitchen at this time of night. Well, I was just hungry. Well, if you'd eat your supper like you're supposed to, you wouldn't be running around here like a pack rat. I got an excuse. I, I ain't eat since dinner. Look, if you're going to hang around, might as well give us some light. <laughs> you bet. What happened to you? Who ran into you? Uh, Tate Brothers. All three of them? Yeah. Well, I wish I'd have been there. Must have been a whopper. Well, nothing to it. Should have known better than trying to influence me like that. The baby contest again? Yeah. 
seems like that's all that's on people's mind nowadays. And there ain't no end to what they'll go to to try to get my vote. Well, I guess you got an apology coming. Well, they apologized all right. <laughs> no, not them. Me. For what? Well, you know, I tried to get you to vote for Kathy's little brother like that. Oh, you yeah. know. You ought not have done that, Jamie. Yeah, I know. I'm awful sorry, Hoss. Well, I figure she must have put some kind of real pressure on you. She sure did. Still a mistake, though. Yes, sir. But nothing to worry too much about. I mean, man's got to learn by his mistakes, ain't he? That's right. I mean, you ought to do what's right if it takes hide off his back. That's right, right. No matter how much pressure's put on him. Right. I mean, it's immoral for a man to to put pressure on another man for his own selfish reasons. That's right. Of course, old Kathy's little brother is a cute little tag, ain't he? But that, you see, you're putting pressure on me. Wouldn't have made me vote for him. No, sir, sure wouldn't have. Well, there's a bright side to everything, Jamie. You learned a good lesson, didn't you, boy? Yes, sir, I sure did. <laughs> good. You know, he is kind of cute, ain't he? <laughs> yeah. Then you think you might vote for him, Hoss? Will you tell him or shall I? You'll have to do your own dirty work, Mrs. Porter. Hello, Hoss. Howdy, Miss Porter. Lane, somebody said you want to see me. Not really, Hoss. It was my suggestion. I sent a telegram to my uncle in Sacramento a few days ago. I got this answer back during this morning. Somebody named Bayfield. What's this all about? Bayfield was her sister's name, presumably. You recall Elaine left town rather suddenly a year ago? Yeah, when her sister had the baby. In Sacramento. Right. Then she came back six months ago with a baby girl. Well, yeah, her sister passed away. And... So Elaine claims. But my uncle tells me that there is no record of any marriage in Sacramento involving anyone by the name of Bayfield. Or a death. Or the birth of a child. Well, well somebody just made a mistake, that's all. Somebody did. Elaine. Little Jennifer is her child, born out of wedlock. I don't believe that. If I should tell that story to the first lady I meet, show her this telegram, all of Virginia City would know about it and believe it inside of an hour. Why would you want to do a thing like that? I mean, just spreading malicious gossip. There ain't no point. But there is. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Unless my son Michael wins first prize in the baby contest. This ain't my house, but I'm taking the liberty. Get out of here. You get out of here right now, and don't you ever come back. Now go and get out of here. You can't mistake him. He'll be wearing a blue organdy dress. It's the only one in town. She'd have to leave Virginia City. At the very least. This ain't that dad burned his carrion's own I ever heard tell of. She, she could ruin you and little Jennifer with that lie. It's not a lie, Hoss. I never had a sister. I never had a husband. But I do have Jennifer. Well, that's... That's all that really counts, then, Aunt. To me, it is. I thought I had it all worked out so that she'd have a decent, proper life. Now it looks like the sins of the mother will be visited upon her poor, innocent head. All because of a dad burn baby contest.
We got to call this whole thing off. No question about it. It's really gotten out of hand. Well, I wish we could, but well, we've done all this business. Our folks have spent their money. If we call this contest off at the last minute, it'll cause no end of trouble. Saw well, what happened in the saloon the other night. Everybody is all stirred up. Well, we should have took the ladies into account. They turned this whole thing into a regular alley cat fracas. I, I could quit. Yeah. Yeah, Hush, you could quit. That would leave it up to Charlie Spears. He, he took the hide. And Jim Pender. He took to his bed. Neither one of them are exactly a pillar of strength, are they? Well, whatever your problem is, Hoss, you are the only one that can decide whether quitting will solve it. No, I reckon it wouldn't. Hop saying. pleasure to welcome you all here today on behalf of the uh, Virginia City Merchants Association. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, uh, uh, as you all know, we are gathered here today to select the most beautiful baby in all of Virginia City. Uh, and, and the first prize is $100. Uh, and this uh, rather charmingly uh, engraved loving cop. Yes, now, uh, if um, all you ladies and parents will, will kindly place your babies in those uh, numbered baskets that we have lined up uh, across the room. Just place your babies in the baskets, and then uh, we'll uh, get started. <laughs> Uh, play, uh, please. <laughs> Brothers are going to beat me up, and Milo Stevens going to keep my cattle from water. Oh, that's a good problem. You boys ready? Yeah, we're ready as we're ever going to be. Come on, boys, let's get it over with. Come on. Here are our judges. Now, 
if you uh, ladies and parents will just step back, just step back from the baskets so the judges can have a good, clear look. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Uh, something. Um, shall we discuss or vote? Uh, let's vote. Uh, you first. Anderson. Tate. Huh? It's just no use, boys. It's got to be unanimous. Uh, let's go again. You first. Uh -huh. Stevens. Anderson. Now, uh, come on, Charlie. At least I showed that I was willing to change. But I ain't willing to get myself horsewhipped. You're both making me sick. You're just voting where the pressure's been put on you, that's all. Now, horse is right. Now, let, let's just put the pressures out of our mind all together. Now, let's just vote right. for the most beautiful baby. Right. right, right. Let the chips fall where they may. Very good. Uh, Tate. Now, there you go again. Well, maybe I really and truly think Rosie Ann Tate's baby is the most beautiful? About the same way I think talkers is. Wait a minute, wait a minute, boys. There's got to be a right honest and honorable way out of this somehow. Well, um, suppose that we eliminate everybody that's put pressure on us? It's worth a try. Let's go look out. It's over, too. Uh, Grogan's kid. And the dressmaker's baby. Yeah, and there's a reason I can't vote for that baby. Uh, yeah, then there's a winner. We gave it to Grogan's kid. Uh, wait a minute. Let, let's go back out there and look one more time just to make sure, huh? Fanfare. Oh. And now, here are the judges with the verdict. Not yet, Bert. Not yet. We want to take one more look. Just one more. Huh? Now, Hoss, you got to start voting. I'm just looking for justice, boys, that's all. Justice? I'd settle not getting killed. What's holding you up? The crowd's getting awful restless. Well, we're working on it. Maybe we could, uh, report like a, like a hung jury. Hung? That, 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 that's very good. I'll tell you what we're going to do, boys. We're going to vote, and we're going to vote honest. No, no, there ought to be a smarter way out of it than that. Things ain't that bad. Are they? They are. Now remember, it's got to be the
the most beautiful baby, and he's got to be honest. It's got to be unanimous, too. Very well, gentlemen. Let's go. And now, here's the verdict. Well, we've reached the verdict, all right, but before I tell you what it is, I got a few things I want to say to you. First of all, I ain't never in all my years in Virginia City seen or heard so much backbiting and blackmailing and badmouthing that's took place the last few days over this, this baby contest. So help me, I can't see anybody out there that ought not to be plumb ashamed of themselves for some of the things they've done to win this contest. Let me tell you something. All kids are winners. All babies are beautiful. That is until their parents get a hold of them and start teaching them to cheat and lie and, and hurt their fellow humans, which is whatever one of you apparently is going to do from the way you've been acting here lately. If it's left up to me, I'd give a prize to every one of the babies, but I sure wouldn't give none to none of the parents. You're going to have an awful hard time, some of you, facing your neighbors the next few days. And you're even going to have a rougher time facing your young'uns when they grow up and find out what you've done to win this here trophy. Well, we've... We've done what you asked us to do. We've voted, and we've voted honest. And we've come to a decision. And we find the most beautiful baby to be Michael Porter. Congratulations, sissy. Thank you, Bert. Uh, I am uh, so very grateful for the honor which has been done me of having my son, Michael, officially recognized as the most beautiful baby in Virginia City. This is the proudest and, and happiest moment of my life. Would you like to see it? I don't care. I don't. I've got the prize. Good. Hang on to it. I suppose you'll want this. You kept your part of the bargain. You really can't believe that we voted honestly, can you? I mean, you really don't believe that your baby is the prettiest. Well, of course he is. I know that. No, you don't. Not really. If you did, then you wouldn't have done all of this to see to it that he won the contest. That's sort of sad. I hope you keep this from Michael. If you ever found out about it, I'm afraid he'd think about as much of his mother as I do. Enjoy your trophy. You probably won't be needing this, but just in case. Thank you, Horace. For everything. What was that all about? Just a little matter of simple justice. I'll explain it over supper. Oh, good. It'll take your mind off the mutton hash. Oh, no. He wouldn't. Well, Hop Singh has his own ideas about justice. No, he would.
He's lame. Somebody's run him into the ground. Man must have been in a hurry. Maybe we better try to find out why. I find somebody. Handcuffs. I'm not trying to hide them. I'm looking for help. What kind of help? It's not for me. It's for the fellow who put these on me. He's back there about three miles hurt. Why don't you stay with him? Because he had a gun in his hand. I figured he's about to kill me. Now, who is this who's about to kill you? Morehouse, Sheriff Clyde Morehouse. I didn't say he was about to kill me. I said I figured he was. I could have been wrong. But if I stayed there, I could have been dead, too. Yes, sir, now, I, I was this prisoner. But he put these cuffs on the wrong man. Crossed my heart and hoped to die. <laughs> it's a fine resolution. I reckon he figured I was trying to escape. Joe, why don't you ride back and have a look? You sure tell him Hank sent you. I'd call that one for the history books. A prisoner sending help to a sheriff that's been on the hanging him. safe, have you? You bet we do. Well, stepped my gopher hole, broke his leg. Throwed me something fierce. Before I knew what had happened, well, he'd have hightailed it. And what'd this fellow do? Well, he and a couple of his friends was helping themselves to bank money. Last month, when they held up a stage, killed a driver, robbed all the passengers, and took off. Yes, sir. You caught yourself a real sweetheart. That sounds like it. Let's get you back to camp. Think you can ride? I reckon so. All right, come on, I'll give you a hand. Oh. Right, take it slow. Oh. I'm saying, what are you going to part this with today? Ah, much holy thing, George. Oh, my God, I don't want to join you. I don't want to join you. I don't want to join you. I don't want to Here he is. He's pretty still about Watch his leg. Yeah. Easy, does it? There we go. Yeah, sure. Howdy. And I looked at the stars in the sky. I wondered if ever a cowboy would drift to that sweet by and by. You try taking off like that again, I'm going to put a bullet in you. I was just going for help. It's like I told these folks. Yeah. And guess what you told them folks? And I stopped you, you'd be fetched up somewhere in Mexico. Who do I thank here? Ben Cartwright, Sheriff. 
Nice on horse over here. Howdy, Sheriff. Much obliged to your son there, Mr. Cartwright. But I got another favor to ask of you. Sheriff, you look as if you could use a doctor. You sure do, Clyde. Mr. Cartwright, if you just strap me up real tight, well, I'll be on my way with him, but I won't have to ask you for the loan of a horse and saddle. Of course, of course. Have much of a case against him? Well, I've all witnessed. Passengers he robbed. When they see me, they're gonna tell you. Too bad you got the wrong Hank Simmons. Well, if that, if that happens, I'll let you go. Till then, I'm not letting you out of my sight. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I think I could use that strapping up right now. Get the bandage box up, Jim. They say there will be a great judgment. And cowboys like doggies will sand. Now, you let breath out, please. <sighs> oh, easy. I won't be able to breathe at all. Exactly what bandage is for. So you not breathe too hard and hurt the rib. When you get to Cottonwood, you see the doctor, and you tell Dr. Hobson is do good job. Thank you. All I can say is I'm plumb out of wind. Good. Oh. Bandage is success. Oh. I'd feel a whole lot easier if you were to stay on here, Sheriff. We can take care of Simmons. I'll feel a whole lot easier when I get him behind bars. If I can get him there. Sheriff, how you feeling? <laughs> well, I tell you, I've been talking awful sassy, but I got to admit, I, I don't feel sassy. I've been thinking, wonder if one of you folks would ride along with me. Well, I suppose I could. Yes, of course. You could. I figure two days going, one day coming back. You'll get deputy pay. No need for that. I'll saddle my horse. You'll get it. Are you really that scared of me, Clyde? Well, I'm careful of loaded guns and rattlesnakes. If you give me any more lip, I'm gonna tie you to that saddle. I'll tell you, it's a sad business when people don't trust each other. I need to see what you do to a real wicked man. Mr. Cartwright, I wanna thank you once again for Oh, you kindness. I am unwelcome. Everything you've done for me. There you are. Ooh. All right, let's ride. And I want to thank you, too, Mr. Cartwright, for your hospitality. The accommodations were too good, but the child board made up for it. Oh, good lost in the great final sale. All that time. Roll on, roll on, little doggy. Roll on, roll on. This is real pretty country. What's been mine in California? You ever been to California, Joe? Yep. Joe, I got to warn you. This fella here could talk the stinger right out of a bee. <laughs> He'll be poking and prying, trying to find your weak spots. He'll try to trick you, catch you off guard. Jump you when he does. You're just suspicious, Clyde. Now, I'm going to settle down there. I put some money together. I'm Stockton Way, raised blooded cattle. Yeah, I've been reading up on it. I'm going to be a cowhand all my life. Assuming you have a life. <laughs> Assuming. That's a good word. You do much reading, Joe? Yeah, fair amount. Yeah, same with me. I like learning things. Never had any real schooling. Kicks around too much for it. But you may have noticed I taught myself reading and writing. And how to speak proper. <laughs> proper, properly. Taught myself a lot of things. Yeah, such as wool pulling. I found I'm smarter than most people. <laughs> roll on, roll on, roll on, little doggy. Roll on, roll on, roll on. Roll on. You know something? I grew up in these hills, that's a fact. Lived with a Mexican family about 10 miles east of here. They didn't have much, but they treated me like one of their own. I never had any family. 
that I can remember. What? What's a woman? I called her Aunt B. I remember her. Must have been about five, maybe six. Kept running away from her. She was mean. And there was another family who took me in. A school teacher brought it with him. She started me reading. But I didn't stay with him either. Don't remember why. Yes, sir. Sheriff, you're taking me right back into home country. I got a lot of friends around here. Why don't you help him, Joe? I don't need help. Well, you look about done in. I'll bet them ribs are burning like fire, aren't they? You know, you want to be careful, Sheriff. You could puncture a lung. I had a friend once did that. Drowned in his own blood. Yeah, hey, come on, knock it off. Well, doesn't it bother you to see a man suffering like that? It hurts me. Just look at him. And for what? We can look like a fool at the end. You aiming to rile me, you have. You shut your mouth or I'll shut it for you permanent. You just remember I don't have to take you back alive. Take the first watch, will you, Joe? Yeah. I would take it, but I got to ease this pain a bit. Take Wendy here over there to that tree. Cuff him around it. Pain making him fretful. You gotta understand that, Joe. Okay, that's far enough. I guess he's worried too, not knowing which Simmons I am. Come on. on the ground, put your hands around the tree. Go on. Especially since we're so close to home country. You must be thinking about the Mexican family and all them friends I have around here. I wouldn't be surprised if they're watching us right now, figuring on doing something. Oh yeah! Think of it, Aka! <laughs> <laughs> Just fool him. If he does that again, knock him out. <laughs> Can't you fellas take a joke? I feel sorry for you. I truly do. You're more prisoners around here than I am. I've got nothing to worry about. I just go to sleep. But you gotta stay awake. Got to jump every time I move. And every time you hear something out there in the night. And tomorrow it'll be worse. I'm afraid I will be a stray cowboy, a maverick unbranded on high, and get in the trouble at dawning when the boss of the riders goes by. Roll on, roll on, roll on, little doggy, roll on, roll on. <laughs>
What's happened here? Where's your papa? Where's, where's Pepe? My father is dead. Pepe, go. Maria. Maria! How long has she been like this? Two, three days. I think she might die. You got any food? Not for a long time. I tried, but I'm sick. I don't mean that. You got any food in the house? See. Please, you help. some water. Get my sister some water. Morning, your sister. Yes, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. Bet you that makes you feel a lot better, doesn't it? You don't remember me, do you? You weren't no bigger than a chicken the last time I was here. Your papa had uh, some horses and a couple of cows, and they gone. I used to live here when I was your age. That's a fact. When did your papa die? Last week. The same sickness as you and your sister? Oh. That's a shame. I was counting on him for something. Yeah. Listen, you know what you need? You need some food in here. I bet you get some food in here, you're gonna feel all right. And I'm gonna fix you some. Now I want you to pay close attention. I made arrangements to meet somebody here. See, I'm a sheriff. And he's one of my deputies. And we're after this real bad man. You understand? Entiendes? I planned on signaling him when I got here. And after I fix you that grub, I'm gonna build a fire, big smoky one. And I want you to promise me to keep it going after I leave. Night and day till he gets here. You think you could do that? I don't know. Why, well, sure you can. You're a big boy, Pedro. His name's Yancey. Tom Yancey. You remember him? He's been around here. See, si. I know him. You tell him that Hank will see him in Mexicali. Think you can remember that? You help Maria. Well, I, I can't do anything for her right now. But I'll send somebody from town. I promise. All right? That's my boy. Now let's get you that grub.
you go, buddy. Uh, think you can feed yourself? I'm gonna cut some brush for that fire. Now, you need anything, you just yell. Gracias. De nada. Didn't get you, huh? Drop it. <laughs> Pedro, kill him. Now you get up. Walk towards that cabin. Still can't take a joke. Pedro uh. Maria! Cuidado. El bandido que busca. A little jumpy, aren't you? Why don't you go ahead and shoot him? You might just as well. He's half dead of the fever and his sister ain't no better. They ain't eaten for three or four days. Well, what are we waiting for? Why don't you take me on into Cottonwood, deputy? truth or because he wants you to say so. Look, I'm just trying to help you, that's all. Don't believe him, Pedro. He's lying. He don't want to help you. Nurse neighbor's a good day's ride off. There's a doctor in Cottonwood now. But you wouldn't get there before tomorrow. It'd be a good day bringing him back here. The girl could be dead by then. Boy, along with her. What I was planning to do, I was going to kill one of them chickens out there and pick some greens and fix up a good soup and hand feed her the broth. What's the matter, Joe? Don't you believe me? I believe what I say. You think I'm lying about what I was planning to do? Or maybe I'm lying about the nearest neighbor. I told you I had a lot of friends around here. One of the others got to be lying and reading your mind. <laughs> sure I am. You're wondering why I want you to stay here. Whether I'm putting off a showdown in Cottonwood or because I expect my friends to come and get me. Right? Or, you know, there's one way I can make sure you don't get away. <laughs> Not you. You wouldn't shoot a man down in cold blood. Now, you're all tied up with what's right and wrong. Now, don't you push me too far. You see, you got them principles, Joe. And I won't let you do things. That's the difference between you and me. I've got none. I can just do anything I want to. I don't care who gets hurt. I know that. I'll tell you something you don't know. I got ways of making people do what I want. Signaling for help? <laughs> I told you, you're signaling my friends for me. I made you do that. <laughs> What's the matter, Hank? Not too sure on my principles right now. Mikasa. Get 
pasa? <laughs> it's all right, Pedro. Yeah, he's just having a little fun shooting at me. He's lying to you. I was just signaling for help. Go on back to bed. Everything's all right. You do what he tells you, Pedro. He'll shoot you if you don't. If you don't try to outsmart me, Joe. You know, I'm sick of listening to your big mouth. <laughs> I'll sing me a favorite song. Sister's better, her fever's down. If she wakes up, she's probably gonna want some of that soup. Yeah, that's right, I'm not too bad to cook. ¿Qué quieres? ¿La mordaza? Tells you. We don't want him to hit you again. Pedrito, estás bien? Got yourself another enemy, Joe. signal fire going. Make it real easy for my friends to find them. Boy, hates you. Maria saw what you did to him. She hates you, too. They're going to set me free. Or my friends will. Maria meets with sweethearts. Didn't know that, did you? She'll do anything I want. Won't you, Maria? Three enemies in here. Gotta sleep sometime too, Joe. Little tired? Yeah, I'm tired. If you try anything, I'm gonna shoot you. I'm not gonna kill you, just shoot you in your leg and break it. I do believe you mean that. I do. Well, see what you're doing to yourself, Joe? 
None of this would have happened if you had stayed with that roundup, minded your own business. That's the meddling. That's what comes of it. Destroys a man's character. I'll live with it. Well, you go ahead and get some sleep, because I ain't gonna do nothing. I don't have to. They're gonna do it for me. que es un oficial. Me mostró a mí su insignia. Dice que el otro es un bandido. I don't want you speaking Spanish. I don't know what you're saying. It makes me think you're planning something I won't like. You speak English. I told you not to speak Spanish. You speak English. Look, I just want you to know that you have no reason to be afraid of me. Hank's my prisoner. I'm acting as a sheriff's deputy. Do you understand that? Hank's wanted for robbery and murder. We were taking him back to Cottonwood to stand trial. He killed the sheriff and he got away. I followed him here. He says he's got a friend who's going to meet him here. I don't know if he's telling the truth or not. You two are sick and I couldn't leave you. I don't know if you believe me, but it's the truth. He hit you. Because I helped Hank. And the knife. I took it to cut the ropes. You can sit up a little. This extra pillow. Why you hit my brother? He came at me with a knife. La verdad? Sí. I didn't want to hurt him. Talk about some soup. Hank is a thief and a murderer. Try anything he can to get away. He's tried using your brother, and he'll try to use you. He's convinced he can make people do what he wants. He's kind of half got me believing it. Enough? I better take it slow. There's plenty more in the stove. If you get hungry, you just let me know, right? Pedro, you want some soup? No. I want you to stay in here. I don't want to see you in the kitchen. I'm going to go outside and put some more wood on that fire. He'll bring his friend. Yeah, that's what Hank keeps saying. I have to have help. I'm just going to have to hope he's lying. Why don't you be sensible? There's no need for you to get yourself killed just because you told the sheriff you'd help. Let me go. Your troubles will be over. I'll ride out of here and never see me again. You better let me go. Because I'm going to get out of here one way or the other. And when I'm out of here, you... Don't! You'll know it when I'm out of here. You'll know it! You stubborn bigot!
Yancey. Yancey, there's a man in here with a gun on me! He's going to the bedroom, Yancey! I'm by the front door! I'm tied by the front door! Joe, why don't you walk out there in the fire and see if it's your friends or mine? Go ahead, Cartwright. Walk out there. He's still in the bedroom, Yancey! Still in the bedroom! Go on, Joe. You should have taken the deal, shouldn't you? You should have listened to me. You should have taken the deal. Still in the bedroom, Yancey! Brother's outside. He cut Hank loose. Now you go get your horse. I can keep him pinned down till you get saddled up. I ain't ready to leave here just yet. I got him right where I want him. Take all the horses. Then let him try it. I can't leave my sister in there. That's right. You can't leave your sister in there with him. Pedro. You do what I tell you. Both of you can ride out of here with us, right, Yancey? That's right, boy. Uh-huh. Like that. Now, go over and stand by the fire where we can see you. No. Well, he ain't gonna hurt you. You're the last person in the world he wants to hurt. Go on. Get it! You want to help your sister, don't you? Go on. All right, right. Come on out and see what I got for you. See what all your clean living righteousness got for you, Joe. Should have shot me when you had the chance. But you couldn't do it, could you? You couldn't kill a man in cold blood. That's why I got it over you. You got principles, but I ain't. I can do anything I want to. Do you get the idea, Joe? Throw your gun out! I mean, now! What does he do to Pedro? He's not going to hurt you, brother. I'm losing patience, Joe. You throw that gun out and you come out after it. Now throw it out! <laughs> oh, get him up. I got lots of plans for you, Joe. I'm going to give you a nice, cool drink at the end of that well rope. What about the boy and the woman?
You got three enemies now. you the extra horse. I figured you might be able to use it. Gracias. Pedro? Take care of your sister now, you? Adios. Adios. Adios.